Welcome to Derm TV Viewer Questions for July 2014. Today's episode will feature questions from Derm TV YouTube viewers as well as DermTV.com viewers. Hello, I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and welcome to Derm TV. Today I'm going to start with questions from DermTV.com viewers. The first question comes from Amna, and she asks, do I need to still wear sunscreen when I go outside to walk for exercise at 7 or 8 p.m. when it's still not pitch black? And she alternatively says, at an hour before it gets dark, do I still need to apply SPF? Amna, the answer is yes, because all day long, regardless of the hour, as long as there's daylight, all the UVA rays come as strong as they were at any other time during the day. And the UVA rays are the rays that cause premature aging of the skin as well as skin cancer. So you still do need sunscreen because those ubiquitous UVA rays are going to get you as long as there's any daylight out there. Next question is from Moana, and she says, Dr. Schultz, I've always had a question regarding self-tanning lotions and the sun. If I apply regularly a self-tanning lotion and then I go to the beach, what happens with the tan I already have? Will I get all spotted or will I get a tan, a new tan from the sun? I wonder if the two tans are compatible. Well, Anna, I'm happy to tell you that the tan you go there with, which was the safe tan that came out of a bottle, the self-tanner, is compatible with whatever tan you get at the beach from the UVA rays. Hopefully you're using a sunscreen so that natural tan that you're getting from the sun is going to be uh, somewhat less than you would have gotten without a sunscreen, but they actually will blend together very nicely and you have nothing to worry about and I love the fact that you're using a self-tanner regularly. The next question comes from Valerie and she says, I'm currently doing progressive exfoliation. I'm in the fifth week, absolutely loving the results. However, I grew up being told that daily exfoliation prematurely ages the skin and there are current articles that still promote this. Am I in any way prematurely aging my skin? Valerie, I'm happy to tell you that you're not because there's something called the Hayflick limit, which says all cells in the body, all regular cells, only have a certain number of finite replications they can do before you run out of cells. However, the Hayflick limit doesn't apply to skin cells, just the way it doesn't apply to blood cells, because both of those types of cells are what are called stem cells, and stem cells have an unlimited number of replications. So you will never run out of skin regardless of what you're doing, whether you're exfoliating or whether you're not. Think of it this way. If the Hayflick limit applied to skin cells, by the time you were 60 or 70 years old and you got scratches on your skin, your skin wouldn't heal anymore. So uh, be assured that exfoliation is perfectly safe and will in fact give you a younger, more radiant and beautiful looking skin. This question is from Jocelyn. She says, am I just as likely to develop a resistance to topical antibiotics as I am with oral antibiotics? Jocelyn, that's a great question. Number one, yes, it is possible to develop some resistance to oral antibiotics, but it usually doesn't happen. And when it comes to topical antibiotics for acne, usually we get no resistance. But the bottom line is, if you're using a topical antibiotic for your acne and it has you under control, and then all of a sudden you're breaking out and the antibiotic isn't helping, the topical one, and you just can't regain control, it's time to change your products anyway, whether we have technically developed resistance or not. All right, let's go on to questions from the YouTube viewers. The first question is from Daniela Altieva, and uh, it says, concerning the episode on why you should only apply antioxidants at night, can we mix antioxidants with chemical exfoliants since both should be used at night? And the answer is absolutely yes. Just use the rules of, app of applying multiple skincare products, which is to go from the lighter vehicle to the heavier vehicle. But yes, they are compatible. His Spit Growl says, can you please address the issue of exfoliation for somebody with rosacea? Very simply. Even people with rosacea who can have more sensitive skin can exfoliate. But you start with the lowest strength exfoliant and you test it in a small area in front of your ear, an area the size of a quarter or two centimeters for the first few nights. And then you go on to test it on the rest of your face and then you start to use it every third night and then every second night, gradually building up to induce tolerance and to make sure that it doesn't irritate you. But there's no reason why somebody with rosacea can't use exfoliants on their skin provided those exfoliants are gentle, which means balanced and chemically buffered. 
Star Slinger says about green tea antioxidant. Does anyone know how many cups of tea would be considered a, quote, considerable amount, unquote, in order to get the skin benefits he talks about? And loose leaves would be best, right, with a question mark. Well, this is, a, this is something we can have a little fun with because if I had this whole table filled with teacups, filled with tea, I'm not sure that that would be enough tea to get you the antioxidant protection you want from green tea for your body or for your uh, skin. Because when we talk about extracts of green tea, we're talking about chemically purified extracts of the polyphenols and the other chemicals that are so, so good at fighting free radicals and reactive oxygen species. When you brew your tea, you're changing the material in the tea, and you're changing those chemicals, and you're not getting very concentrated extracts of the ones that survive the heating of the tea. So unfortunately, nobody's going to be able to give you the answer, but the bottom line is it's unlikely that you're going to get adequate green tea protection as antioxidant by drinking tea, regardless of whether you spend all day drinking 85 or 100 cups of tea. The last question today comes from Rebecca Wolf. And Rebecca says, just because the sunscreen is really cheap, does it mean it doesn't work as well? Rebecca, absolutely not. In the United States, sunscreen ratings with SPFs and uh, declarations of UVA or broad spectrum protection are very carefully regulated by the government. And any sunscreen, regardless of whether it's cheaper or more expensive, that has a given SPF with UVA protection is going to be just as good at protecting you as an expensive one versus a cheaper one. I'll say that less expensive ones may not feel as good when you put them on, they may not uh, have a silkier consistency, or they may not uh, have all of the other chemicals that skincare products have that just make them feel better. But you can bet one thing, whether it's an expensive one or a cheap one, if it says SPF 30 with UVA protection, you can get the same protection from both as long as you apply them first thing in the morning and reapply them every two hours and after swimming or sweating. So that's it for this month's viewer questions. And don't forget, the subjects from so many Derm TV episodes come from your questions, which are great. So please keep sending them in and I'll keep answering as many of them as I can. Please join me again at DermTV.com. If you have a question, please send it to me by visiting dermtv.com slash question. I'm Dr. Neil Schultz, and thank you for watching today.